Tetrodotoxin is a neurotoxin that is found in pufferfish. The prefix tetrodo refers to the order of the pufferfish, tetraodontiformes. But I like to remember this using the word toad, as in the tetrodotoxin toad. So with the word toad in mind, I'm going to give you a quick visual mnemonic to nail tetrodotoxin come test day. Naturally, this scene takes place in a fugu restaurant. For the unenlightened, a fugu restaurant is an expensive sushi restaurant that serves fugu, which is actually a type of pufferfish. But wait, I thought you said this scene was about toads. Well, sort of. If you take a look at what's on the menu, you'll see a weird toad slash pufferfish hybrid. Now, now, I'm not trying to play God here. I'm just trying to give you a helpful way to associate the word tetrodotoxin with the word pufferfish. To help strengthen the association, know that pufferfish are also called prickly toadfish in some parts of the world. They really do look alike, right? Anyway, our tetrodotoxin toad versus pufferfish thing is here to stay, got that? So, fugu restaurants are notoriously dangerous, and it's because of tetrodotoxin. When the pufferfish is prepared, the chef has to carefully remove the parts that contain tetrodotoxin. And if the chef messes this up, you'll be in for an unpleasant, and possibly lethal, surprise. And that's why I don't eat at fugu restaurants. Just kidding, it's because of my crushing student loans. You know who else can't afford fugu? The male protagonist in our scene. But I'll get to him in a minute. First, turn your attention to the date he's trying to impress. Eh, it looks like our chef here didn't remove all the tetrodotoxin from their meal. Or maybe it was just some bad raw toad. In any case, the girl has developed some pretty severe vomiting. <coughs> this is to remind you of the severe vomiting that occurs with tetrodotoxin ingestion, which makes sense because your body wants to get the toxin out ASAP. Symptoms can take place as soon as 30 minutes after ingesting tetrodotoxin, which is a bummer for this couple because they were really hitting it off. So I can think of at least one other way your body can get rid of tetrodotoxin, and our male protagonist here is going to help us remember it. You see, when the girl decided to paint the walls a new color, she inadvertently knocked over a bottle of soy sauce right into her date's lap. All of that brown liquid on his pants reminds me of the diarrhea associated with tetrodotoxin ingestion. Nice. Now for the guy who's really to blame for this mischance at love, the chef. But he's not doing so hot either. Perhaps understandably so, he also started freaking out when the girl started spewing her meal. In all this kerfuffle, he pulled apart the cord on his electric salt shaker and gave himself quite the little shock. That's right, an electric salt shaker, with extra voltage. I told you this restaurant was fancy, didn't I? For obvious reasons, salt represents sodium, so it should be clear that an electric salt shaker symbolizes voltage-gated sodium channels, right? And who would have guessed it, but tetrodotoxin works by binding to and blocking voltage-gated sodium channels. What a weird coincidence. Recall from that lecture you slept through, fast voltage-gated sodium channels are used to conduct action potentials down an axon. I mean, how else are you going to depolarize that neuron? When these channels get blocked, nerve conduction gets taken out. This is a helpful association to remember, as it's going to help explain the next few symbols. Remember when I told you that chef got zapped? Take a closer look at that frayed electric wire. It should help remind you of the neuropathy and paresthesias that patients develop after tetrodotoxin ingestion. In fact, it seems like that electric shock has actually left our chef paralyzed. Again, this makes sense. If you knock out the fast voltage-gated sodium channels, you knock out nerve conduction, and without nerve inputs, your skeletal muscles are pretty much useless. Next, take a look at our chef's little fish mallet. Just like how meat needs tenderizing, pufferfish need a good pounding before being ready to eat. In fact, this is actually how he gets the tetrodotoxin out of the fugu. Just beat it out. Maybe this poor logic explains why the restaurant is now in disarray. Just beat it out? How is that supposed to work? Anyway, his resulting paralysis has caused him to drop his hammer. But wait, that fish hammer looks a lot like a reflex hammer and it's falling to remind you of the decreased reflexes seen in patients with tetrodotoxin poisoning. Again, this is obvious. A reflex arc relies on fast, voltage-gated sodium channels to transmit its message. No voltage-gated sodium channels, no reflexes, you feel? Finally, notice how our falling fugu chef is about to knock over his personal fan. You'd think a fancy fugu joint would have better ventilation, right? Anyway, this falling fan should remind you of the most feared complication of tetrodotoxin poisoning, respiratory failure. 
When the nerves involved in respiration are taken out, patients can actually suffocate and die. While we're here, do you remember anything about Guillain-Barre syndrome? Well, what about myasthenia gravis? These are two diseases that also affect nerve conduction, and if you hate yourself sufficiently, you've seen enough UWorld questions to know that those diseases can also cause respiratory failure. I only mention them because I want you to develop a conceptual understanding as to why nerve conduction abnormalities can be so scary. All of that being said, treatment for tetrodotoxin is supportive. You really just have to wait for the body to clear the toxin. And if they stop breathing, obviously you'll intubate. All right, that's all we have for tetrodotoxin. Let's quickly recap. Tetrodotoxin is a neurotoxin that is found in pufferfish, like those served at fugu restaurants. Patients can develop signs and symptoms within 30 minutes of ingestion, such as vomiting and diarrhea. Tetrodotoxin exerts its neurologic effects by binding to and blocking fast voltage-gated sodium channels. This is why patients can develop paresthesias, paralysis, and decreased reflexes. Severe paralysis can affect the muscles of respiration, which can be lethal. That being said, treatment is generally supportive as you wait for the body to clear the toxin. Phew, all right, I think I've earned some fugu. And just put it on my tab. I can refinance after I graduate, right? Thanks for watching. For more videos like these, click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also check out the interactive version of this image at pixarize.com by following the link in the description. If you like what we're doing, share with your friends on social media, and we'll keep making great content like this. We'll see you next time.